No, no, so I was, um, I was many years ago, I was at an event in Africa, in Kenya, and I was impressed because for every speech, the speaker said, good afternoon, good morning, and the entire audience uh, replied. So I tried this again, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ooh, good. So I have your attention, that's nice. Yeah, thanks. Um, I have a clock over there. Yeah, it is a pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, some of you, uh, some of you might know me, others don't. Uh, I'm Atina Trakas. As Tanis mentioned, I worked since many years in the geo community. To be honest, like the end of the 90s or mid of the 90s, so I'm literally old. So I can give a presentation about looking, you know, backwards. So. And I need glasses. That's the most. Okay. Yeah. So, what what are you expecting? What can you expect the next uh, 25 minutes, half hour? Um, the short introduction to what who I am. Then I look back a little bit. You know, how, where do I come from? Because the topic is, you know, bridging horizons. And I think with the geospatial community, and I moved on to the meteorological community. These are huge horizons, and it, if you know, imagine if we are able to combine them, then we can really make an impact um, in both communities. So, who am I? I am. I will uh, look at free and open source software a little bit, and you say, "Ah, oh, what?" But you will see. Um, then, of course, um, the organization I work with, the ECMWF, and uh, so who of you, you know ECMWF, the European Centre for Medium Range Weather Forecasts? Okay, I hope that I can change that a little bit. And um, then I have uh, some clo closing thoughts. Good. Yeah, who I, who, who I am, I'm a geographer. Also, I don't need that, I have the microphone here. I'm a geographer, um, and I studied uh, anthropogeography and physical geography uh, in Bonn, and I worked in companies, in GIS companies in Bonn. As I said, I started working early uh, at the late 90s and um, also, you know, we worked many years in early 2000 as well. And I want to mention also Astrid because she has been a colleague for many years. So I have been after that um, over 15 years um, in, in OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium. Who knows OGC? Oh, that's nice. So, I hope that we can make, uh, you know, that after the speech and after this event, um, more people know also ECMWF. Um, because that's my new employer, and uh, I've been a free and open source and open standards and open data supporter, um, especially the FAIR principle, I think, uh, is something uh, we need to focus on. Mm. Then I, a charter member of OSGEO um, since 2008. And I've visited Estonia before for the ESCAS conference in 2015, and uh, I have also been to Tartu, and it's nice to be back here. It's a lovely city. Yeah, so after, yeah, by the way, after sabbatical, um, after leaving OGC, I took a sabbatical, and then I moved to this meteorological community, and I have to say, they have even more abbreviations than we have in the geospatial community. And it took me, well, it's, you know, NWP, well, could that be national? But uh, now that's numerical weather prediction, so I had, I had a steep learning curve. Um, I'm far away from understanding everything, but I'm on a very good way. Um, and what is more important is that I saw that if you connect people, if you connect communities, we really can make an, uh, an, an impact. So, yeah, as I said, we, uh, I started working in, in GIS in the, late 80, in the late 90s, and at that time, uh, at the company CCGIS, we, already, we did GIS and web GIS. And it was at that time already that we said, okay, of course we implement OGC standards, because that's the way to go if you want to do something with uh, web GIS. OGC was founded in 1994, so it has been, had already been around. And so we were working, we sold a few um, 
um, proprietary licenses for a German uh, GIS uh, producer, but what we mainly did was service providing. And yeah, then, ooh, free software, open source, source came around, and uh, so um, at that time, the UMN map server, and we were all like, okay, what is that? That is uh, an intriguing idea, that's a nice idea, um, because we really want to work with the clients. So um, Arnulf and I went to the second MOM, the map server user meeting in Ottawa, and that was really, was really nice because so many people I knew from mailing lists, I met suddenly in person, and you know, you feel quite humble if you, you meet a Daniel Morissette or a Steve Lime. Um, and I met also that guy. <laughs> I think he's still around, I'm not sure if he, so, um, and you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Tom, sorry, I had to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, Tom is Greek, I'm half Greek, so and of course this matches, the Greek connection. And uh, additionally, um, uh, he was quite helpful because he, he has also, you know, he's in the geospatial community as well and the meteorological community, so that was excellent for, for the preparation for the talk. So, um, then the, we brought the enthusiasm over to, to Germany and, uh, but already in Germany, you know, they heard about uh, UMN Map Server. It was the UMN Map Server then. And, uh, you know, there, there, there was a, a plan, there was a, a small little plan, and it was growing. And, uh, you know, together with, with, uh, with the community in Bonn, we really made it grow. And, um, yeah, so consequently, the, we changed the business model, or model of the company. We said, okay, we anyway uh, sell only a few licenses. Our focus is service providing, so let's go the full pina colada, as we say, you know, let's go full open source software. And I spare you the debates about, no, we are free software. No, no, open source is enough. People don't understand free. But, um, I'm very glad that uh, this free and this free and open source made it into the FOS4G. Um, so this is what we did. And oh, that there's a lot of talking included to explain people what open source and free software is. Um, I got questions like, oh, it doesn't cost anything, so it's probably not good. And probably some of you know that. Or stuff like, oh cool, free like in free beer, no, rather like in free speech, and we have to fight for that. And uh, well, the most strange thing was, um, someone asked me, because at the company we were, uh, we were also providing a training, and of course we charge for the training, and then it was the question, ah, but the software is for free, why do I have to pay for the training? And I go like, are you, are you? Seriously, and uh, you know, then we said, okay. In 2004, at the Corp conference, uh, we had a presentation and uh, we published that article: "Open Source and Free Software More Than Saving Money." And um, there, you can you, you can still download it and you can read it, and it's explaining a lot of things, soft skills like you know, empowering the user, and um, you know, how is that suddenly, uh, is it a client or not? So it's providing also an insight into free software in general. So as I said, it's, uh, at that time we had this uh, conversations about free software and open source software, but it's also like software development through collaboration um, is much better, or changing relationship between the user and, and uh, the producer of software. Um, but also technical aspects, so the, um, they shed a light on technical, uh, technical aspects like uh, FOSS uh, develop, software development in, in FOSS in software and free and open source software, um, compared with this black box uh, thing where you don't have control um, the source code about the code um, in, in proprietary software or 
closed source software um, to not uh, yeah. So, and depending on the background, so if you're a student or a teacher or a small company, a big company, a government agency, the reason why to go the open source way might be different. So, uh, I would like to invite you to do that. But then I was really like, oh, check the program. And I saw that we have a panel here led by uh, Mir Miriam Gonzalez about changing the mindset of open source. It's just for those who cannot afford the pay license. And I was like, wow, 20 years later, we are still at the same spot. No, we aren't. So it sh just shows that more and more people come in. And with new people coming in, we have to explain the principles again and again. So of course, it's well, cool. I have uh, free software. I can use that. But as said, the idea behind open source and free software is much more, and I would encourage you to attend the panel and, and, and really, you know, read that and spread the word. That is uh, very important. So, then, you know, I mentioned open standards. This is what we did at the company, and open source software, that goes very well together. And um, you just need to go through the program, then you understand that this works. So, we, we have this aspect, uh, um, we, we, we got them right, uh, but there was also, ah, and, and by the way, this is a, these are reference implementations for OGC standards, and many reference implementations of OGC standards are um, OSG software. I hope you, or if you haven't been aware of that, yet, now you are. And, you know, in my experience while I was working with uh, uh, OGC, you know, and, and being connected to the Foscus community, I really saw like a new standard was just published or in, in preparation and the Foscus community, they were, well, yeah, they were fast. And so we saw very, f um, very early in the process of um, developing standards or publishing standards already, in, already implementations that were from the FOSS community. So, now we had, as I said, the open standards and the open source software uh, clicked. So, next thing, what are we doing with open data? And then in 2002, uh, OpenStreetMap uh, came around. Who, who of you is involved in mapping with OSM? Yeah, nice, very good. Um, and then, I don't know if you heard about the egg formation, because that was an initiative you know, and that's about GMES and, and, and data. So, ERSC, the European Remote Sensing, as, uh, the European Association for Remote Sensing Companies, and ESA, they published this small video, and I, I watched it again. It's about, you know, data that has been, um, fi you know, data that has been uh, or, um, paid already by the taxpayers. Why should we pay again for it? So it was, it was in favor of open, uh, of open data. Mm. And GMES, that's a global monitoring um, system for the uh, environmental security. And that actually is the predecessor of Copernicus. And now that's a good bridge over to ECMWF because we are dealing, uh, we are operating two Copernicus services. But first things first, um, yeah, we are we are a unique organization, and uh, the most th well, and we address critical and most difficult research problems. And now you have who remembers NWP? No, that's the wrong thing. Okay. <laughs> N numerical weather predictions. So this is what we do, numerical pr weather prediction for medium range. And I had to ask, what is medium range? Because I thought in weeks or months, and they said like three to five days, is that correct? Or five, more, 10? Okay, 10 days. So this is what we do. We are an intergovernmental organization and with over, we have 35 member and cooperating member states. They are not equal to the EU, so um, here on the map you see um, the outline of our uh, membership. And the organization has been established in 1975, so I think it's more than time enough that the communities get, to get, uh, get together. 
We are a research in institute with over 350 co um, colleagues um, on the three sites, and I'm very happy to say we, have, we are four people from ECM Lab UF here. Um, maybe colleagues can raise their hands. Yeah, that's my supporting team. <laughs> so, as at Research Institute, we do a 24/7. Uh, we provide 24/7 operational services, and this is really a big thing. Um, and most of the member states, the, me the, uh, the meteorological uh, institutes, uh, they work, they use our data and our services. So what we do, science and technology, it's, we can say that we are world-leading weather and earth system, in earth system science. We do things that have an impact. Um, maybe you have heard about the European State of the Climate Report uh, that is published uh, by ECMW, uh, ECMWF um, through the Copernicus Sir, one of the Copernicus services, and of course our focus is also organization and people, and that's all written in a strategy paper, um, 2021 to 2013. So, I mentioned Copernicus. So I ask again, who of you have heard or is using Copernicus data? Okay, that's great. So. Copernicus services transform satellite and in-situ in data and into val value-added information. And that is true for all the six uh, areas uh, that, is, that are covered by Copernicus. And um, the data is operational, quality-assured, free and openly accessible to all users. So again, we are following the, um, the FAIR principles here. As I mentioned before, in, in, at, uh, at the center, we operate the Copernicus Climate Change Service, C3S, and the Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring uh, System that comes. So think about wildfires, uh, particulate matters, uh, ozone, and uh, the, the, the like. Mm. Additionally, we provide computational for the, we are the computational center for floods and fire forecast products, um, and in contact with the East, uh, European Commission G GRC. So, Copernicus Climate Change Service. We have a, a lot. You know what is it? It supports the adoption um, um, policies at national and global level, EU level and providing a consistent and authoritative information about cli climate change. As mentioned, uh, we, we have various uh, different reports. Uh, there's a lot of data available. Um, we have user applications like the climate pools. Um, that is a near-real-term near update on key global climate variables. And uh, that's crucial to understand the changes in our climate. Um, so these climate variables, just to give you an idea, is uh, ice, land, atmosphere, and ocean are ocean-related, and um, they are also include the anthroposphere and the hydrosphere. So the um, Copernicus Interactive Climate Atlas is a web application to exactly this. Uh, interactive, uh, uh, you know, provides data allowing in allowing flexible exploration of the data. And uh, I would like to invite you, um, the presentations will be online, uh, there are links, and you can click on the links, it's a PDF, and then you can check out what we are doing in more detail. So, Copernicus, I mentioned, the CAMS, the Atmospheric Monitoring System, um, or a service, is also helps uh, policymakers and uh, really encourage you to, to look into that. Um, because atmospheric information or moni monitoring is important, um, also on that for, uh, from a health perspective, you know, pollen, uh, UV radiation. So um, it's really something that is used in a lot of different areas. So these are the two Coper Copernicus service wh what we, wh where we have what, that we are operating. And then there's also Destination Earth. That's an ambition initiative of the European Union to cr create a digital twin and uh, an interactive computer simulation to our 
planet. Um, so Destination Earth will allow user to explore interactively um, the different components of the Earth system and natural and human-induced change. So and you can imagine that all the data we have from Copernicus and also uh, from, from the center go into the digital twin um, project. And we are doing this together with ESA, European Space Agency, and UMATSAT, and uh, governed uh, and supported by external device by the European Commission. And in the exhibition area, there is a destination Earth pool. So um, I'm not running that, but I just want to point you there. You can go there, and uh, if you're interested, and digital twin, you know, is also a buzzword, but you will see there's a lot of machine learning involved in, in uh, destination Earth as well. That brings me to the last aspect, what we do at uh, ECMWF at the center. We do a lot of machine learning as well. And uh, so we have destination Earth. I mentioned that then general uh, machine learning projects. And we do pilot projects with our member states. At the moment, this is uh, Met Norway and Meteo Swiss. So because, you know, ML is all, all, all over the place and uh, we know there will be a time before machine learning and after machine learning. So we are in the after machine learning time. So of course this infects or influences also um, weather forecast what we are doing. <clears throat> so we run this in three areas, a scientific aspect where we test out what is, um, you know, what is possible or, or, or observation dr driven uh, machine learning systems. And then, of course, embracing novelty. So we are developing um, um, ML ensemble forecast. And you know, if you want to to learn more about that, talk to us later. And we're testing out because uh, and we have uh, implemented a machine learning roadmap, which is pretty, yeah, pretty you know uh, worked out. So yeah, there's more coming. We are at the start. And uh, this is uh, pretty exciting. <clears throat> yeah, open data at ECMWF. Um, so, yeah, we have an increasing amount of data uh, that is available under an open license. So we have an open data roadmap. And, you know, the center I mentioned is running the Copernicus services, so we have the Copernicus data, but we have also our own data, that's the, um, what we do for weather prediction. And what we plan in the open data roadmap is also to gradually decrease the cost of access, and we want to have a fully open catalog by 2026 with a significant portion of freely available information and data. So for the next few years, the center will operate a complex dual licensing system, so please bear with us, support us, and you know, especially go to our data um, uh, data center and, and check things out. And all real-time data, um, including open data, can be delivered in a bespoke package and will ser will, uh, with services which are subject to service charges, so you can read the details on our website. Uh, again, here is the link. So, you know, we are moving towards that. Um, at the moment, most of the data is shared with member states uh, or, or partner organizations, but we really want to go uh, the open data way because, you know, data that is not used, well, it's kind of useless, I would say. So, and uh, to make data um, more fair, we are allow, you know, we're following the digital work, design of API, and again, uh, you know, I would like to point to my colleagues because uh, they are the experts here. Um, and then we have a lot of developments uh, of open source Python in open source Python libraries. We implement OGC standards in our um, products. So I think there are a lot of opportunity um, to do some, uh, stuff in common. Um, I mentioned that before. So that brings me to the aspect. I know there are already um, projects where the geospatial community and the meteorological community work together. But you know, when I worked, started working with ECMWF, it was like, wow, this amount of data. And uh, I'm not sure if this is correct, but we have, well, we have one of the biggest data archives uh, globally. 
and we need to use this data. And um, here you have the links to the atmosphere, the CAMS atmosphere uh, data store and the climate data store. Um, and you can, you know, dive into the data and see what is there. Um, on our website, you also find uh, the open data policies and links. You can browse the data files. You can go there. And I was told I can show this picture. Some people might understand. No, it's really do something. And then the most important thing is um, check things out. We are on GitHub. And what, what, what I would like to bring to the community here today is what do you need from us? What can we, um, what can we do? Because untapped, uh, untapped uh, data, that, that's, as I said, it's useless. And um, we, you know, this working together, that is what, what makes the community strong, that makes us strong, and also that makes an impact um, for our environmental and societal and also business uh, challenges. So check things out and then talk to us. You know, if, you, if you've played around with the data or with the products and uh, there are aspects you say, eh, eh, could be better, that do not just walk away and throw things away and say, eh, you know, talk to us. We are here, we are approachable. And um, because that's throughout my, my career, if people do not talk to each other, you know, you do not get anywhere. And that is the most important aspect. And, and therefore, you, I really encourage you to talk to my colleagues, uh, Cihan, Carlos, and Eddie. And uh, additionally, I would like to thank again, uh, you know, Tom and also Vasile, uh, because they are both there, also in the meteorological world and the geospatial world. So I ask them, what do I need to, to ask? What do I need to do? And because I want to go beyond the things we are already doing, because this is what we have. We have so many challenges. We have so many, yeah, it's a hard time. But I think we, if we all work together, and if we bring together our forces, then you know, um, I think we will find good solutions to do things. And uh, again, this all is an invitation for you to, to, to talk to us, to check out the data. You know, is the software fit for purpose? What are the requirements of you? So this is important to make our, you know, to make us not only provide data, but really, you know, provide data in a way that might be, that, that is important and interesting for you. Um, before I go for the final plus, I want to, so because we have an innovation program uh, in ECMWF, and this is what I'm running, so I don't have my bags. That's Code for Earth, and I have a presentation on Thursday. Sorry, that was the advertisement part. <laughs> so, and, you know, I said a lot of, you're yeah, talking, and, you know, we need to get together, but that's really the thing. If you want, I like this proverb a lot. You know, you can go fast, and mainly you go alone. But what we need nowadays is, you know, to go far. It's not about who is first and who is second. It's about how far do we get. And if we work together, that is, um, then I have hope um, for, for, you know, for, for our future challenges. Yeah, thanks a lot for your interest. <laughs> and I'm done. Good? Thanks. <laughs>